Yo, what's up guys? MMA analyst here to give you my betting picks for UFC 144. Um, a lot of uh, close fights actually on paper. And um, they're gonna be in Japan and they're gonna have that whole warrior spirit thing going. I, I mean, this isn't the kind of card where you're gonna see a lot of safe, um, you know, people playing it safe. Um, minus, you know, the main event, Anthony Pettis and Joe Lozon. Basically, any fights with, you know, all Americans in it, not including Quentin Rampage Jackson's fight, you're going to see just a lot of, a lot of just fighting. And uh, it's good for entertainment. I think this is going to be one of the most exciting cards of the year for betting. Probably going to see a lot of um, unexpected things happening. I'll be very surprised if, if uh, a vast majority of the uh, favorites win. With that said, um, you know, let's get right down to it. Frankie Edgar versus Ben Henderson. Uh, this is going to be a um, gold pick for Frankie Edgar. By the way, as always, I suggest, I'm sure everybody does, right? Why not? But uh, watch my regular predictions video for maybe a more in-depth breakdown. And then here I'll just kind of give the pick with, uh, you know, not as in-depth. But basically, I'm picking Frank Edgar, gold pick. Um... Faster, um, better striking. Um, you know, you know, he'll be in and out, and Ben Henderson is gonna have to chase Frankie Edgar. And if he catches Frankie Edgar, he's gonna have to take him down. He's gonna have to hold him down. He's gonna have to try and submit him. He's gonna have to try and do damage. And Frankie Edgar can get back to his feet quickly. Now he is small, Ben Henderson. Um, you know, he, he's a big guy for 155. If he gets Frankie down and he gets him in like a like seriously gets on top and not just kind of how many take him down and he pops right back up, then you know you could see something else from from Ben Henderson. But uh, in all likelihood, I see Frankie Edgar um, moving around, um, sticking and moving, you know, jabbing uh, in and out, and, uh, and and that's that. The reason why it's not a higher, uh, you know. I'm not more confident is because Ben Henderson has shown so much improvement. He has upped his um, aggression. And if he goes out there aggressive and just tracks down Frankie Edgar and puts him up against the cage, he's not going to tire him out. But uh, he could potentially um, grind his way to a victory. But I can't possibly see um, him grinding Frankie Edgar down for three or five rounds. So I'm going to go with Frankie Edgar. Uh, but again, it is a uh, a gold pick for Frankie Edgar because, in, in all honesty, it, it, it could kind of go either way. But I'm going to go with Frankie Edgar not getting uh, trapped. Quinn Rampage Jackson versus Ryan Bader. All right, it's like this. It's a diamond pick based on skills. It's a diamond pick based on what Quentin Rampage can bring to a fight and what Ryan Bader can bring to a fight. I've watched a lot of, and I just want to put a... You know, it's still a diamond pick, but I want to put a lot of um, focus on Quentin Rampage Jackson is going to go there and try to knock out Ryan Bader. He's going to go there and he's going to try to put on a show for his fans, for the Japanese people. I mean, we're all his fans if you are a fan, but he loves the Japanese crowd and they love him. Could this lead to problems? Could it lead to, you know, bad game planning? Could it lead to Quentin Rampage gassing? Has he properly trained every time Quentin Rampage goes out there against somebody, you know, that he's supposed to whoop on? Uh, the fight actually ends up a lot tougher than it needs to be. Um, you know, he, he put up one hell of a fight against Leota Machida. Um, put up a ser you know, decent fight against John Jones. Goes up against Matt Hamill. Uh, and, and, and trying to knock Matt Hamill out still wins clearly, but look at his two. I think his biggest mismatches he's had in the past few years were Forrest Griffin and Keith Jardine. Keith Jardine was a was a getting knocked down in the final seconds of the fight away from actually beating him, and Forrest Griffin did beat him, and that's because Quentin Rampage Jackson hates training and I don't think he takes like everybody 
uh, equally as serious. So when a guy like Ryan Bader is in front of him, as long as he trains and as long as he does what he's supposed to do, he will win that fight and he will knock out Ryan Bader. But there's a possibility that he's not training. These are things that I don't have insight to. So hopefully he is training and hopefully he does what he's supposed to do. Because if he does, you've got Quentin Rampage Jackson at minus 250. And honestly, I think that's a great price for Rampage Jackson. So it is a diamond pick for Quentin Rampage Jackson. Next, Mark Hunt versus Chet Congo. Um, what is Chet Congo at? I'm just going to take a look here. I don't even know. He is at minus 320. Yikes. Um... He should win this fight. I'm going to do a silver pick for Chet Congo. He should be able to get the fight to the ground and ground and pound Mark Hunt. I do think he'll win that fight. But these are two powerful heavyweights. Uh, he was supposed to just go out there and take down Pat Berry. And we saw what happened, right? He almost got knocked out. He had to have basically the comeback of the year to avoid that. So he needs to go out there and take Mark Hunt down and, and just go the easy route. Uh, but they are both strong, powerful heavyweights. They are both, um, you know, not well-rounded fighters. So I'm not going to have much more than a silver pick. It's almost a do-not bet. But Czech Congo should win. Um, silver pick for Czech Congo. By the way, knockout of the night. Quentin Rampage Jackson over Ryan Bader. Um, fight of the night. Probably Frankie Edgar versus Ben Henderson. Um... But I don't think Ben's going to make it a boring fight. Um, Anthony Pettis versus Joe Lozon could also be um, a fight of the night. But, you know, the bigger fight normally gets it. And submission of the night, just looking up and down the card here. I'm not sure, to be honest. Let's just continue down the card. Yoshihiro Akiyama versus Jake Shields. This could be a gold pick for Jake Shields. Um, they're both going to uh, 170. Um, I think they're going to have problems uh, with cardio. Um, and I don't think you're going to see the best Jake Shields versus the best Akiyama. Minus 320 for Jake Shields is just not good numbers. Um, I mean, honestly, it should probably be closer, but, you know, it is what it is. I think that in the end of the day, though, Jake Shields is going to be able to tire Akiyama uh, down enough. To, uh, to finally get him to the ground. And uh, if not submit him, then at least beat him two of three rounds. So uh, I do have Jake Shields winning that, and it is a gold pick. Um, Tim Boach versus Yushin Okami. This is a platinum pick for Yushin Okami. Um, Tim Boach is worse at everything, and uh, he will basically need to just muscle around Yushin Okami and be aggressive or maybe catch Yushin Okami with one of his wild haymakers or something like that. I don't really see that happening. It could happen, but I don't see it happening. I think Okami will be able to use superior grappling, superior striking, superior foot movement, head movement, superior everything. And, uh, and Yushin Okami is probably not going to finish Tim Boach. Uh, probably Tim Boach gets tired. Yushin Okami just keeps plodding forward and, uh, you know, I see Yushin Okami taking this win, uh, taking this fight by submission. Hatsuhiyoki versus Bart Palaszewski. This is a gold pick for the underdog, Bart Palaszewski. Um, I think he's going to knock out Hatsuhiyoki. Um, Hiyoki's going to come out there, um, you know, play the game a little bit, try and work in some stand-up and some takedowns, and uh, I think in that timing there, he's going to get caught and finished. Uh, Hiyoki is, you know, very good grappler, but uh, Palaszewski is not a he's not a noob on the ground by any stretch of the imagination. So I do think that uh, Palaszewski will get this win. Um, if you're thinking about betting, uh, you know, straight up or parlays, this is one that's good, obviously, to bet just straight up. Palaszewski is a uh, plus one fifty, and it looks like people have been um, betting on Hiyoki a lot as Hiyoki's odds have gone down to 170, minus 170, and then uh, Palaszewski's have gone up to 150, so I mean that's even better for uh, for the underdog. Okay, next fight, Anthony Pettis versus Joe Lozon. This is going to be a platinum pick for Anthony Pettis. 
I do see uh, Anthony Pettis being able to win at least two of three rounds, potentially all three. The biggest problem, uh, the threat with Joe Lozon is him catching you in the first round. But I see Pettis being able to uh, use what I believe to be superior striking, definitely better wrestling, and um, you know, solid defensive jujitsu to, to 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 come out of this fight with uh, a win. Um, even if he were to get caught by a punch. I don't see Anthony Pettis giving up the submission. Uh, he hasn't been submitted yet. Um, he's fought some decent um, you know, submission fighters, some de decent grapplers, and uh, he, you know, he hasn't been submitted yet. And he himself has uh, six submissions, um, and some over some pretty decent guys like Shane Roller, you know, triangle chokes. I mean, he knows how to fight. Very well-rounded fighter. I think that he'll get this win. And it is a platinum pick again for Anthony Pettis. Takenori Gomi versus Mitsuoka. Um, I'm going to do a do not bet here. Um, it's just Gomi is just so one dimensional. Mitsuoka, Mitsuoka is also, um, you know, ground game one dimensional. Both of them, I don't know, you know, who's going to be able to, who's going to be able to, uh, implement their game plan or strategy. Uh, if you do have to make a pick, uh, Mitsuoka, let's see, where is he? In? He is plus 170, 170, Gomi's minus 200. I do think Gomi, again, it's a toss-up, will be able to catch Mitsuoka. Um, if you did want to put money on Mitsuoka at 170, you could if you have some extra money that you're not worried about losing. Uh, I mean, really, all of this should be extra money that you're not worried about losing. But anyways, that's up to you. The point is, um, it's going to be a do not bet for me. But either way, it's just where do you want to put the money? Do you want to put the money on the favorite, at minus 200, or the underdog? I think it is a coin toss at the end of the day. Um, same fight, same thing with Kid Yamamoto versus Von Lee. Actually, I'm going to go silver pick for Kid Yamamoto. Um... You know, I, I, somebody had talked to me. They said, you know, Von Lee's been training his ass off. He's been, uh, you know, the guy trains with Von Lee in the UK or something. And I told me that he's been doing um, these gauntlets where, like, you know, it's it's actually pretty common. But where they'll have multiple fighters come in and, and they'll each take a minute. So you get, like, fresh fighters over and over again against one guy. And they'll go, like, eight minutes straight or something like that like eight different fighters gauntlet with von lee and von lee's you know whooping on people um i can't make a pick based on that uh, i gotta make a pick based on what i've seen and what i've seen is he hasn't been able to beat anybody even remotely close to anything yeah, and, and he's lost to every solid uh, opponent that he's had uh, 11 wins seven losses and like i said uh, not one win is notable Kid Yamamoto should be able to, if he's smart, outstrike him and out wrestle him. And he needs to do both of those things. So, uh, you know, Kid Yamamoto should win, but he just looks so poor as well. Like, I didn't think he would lose to Darren uh, Uyanoyama. And when you look at it, Kid Yamamoto is 1 in 4 in his last 5 fights. That's one win since December 2007. So. Under normal circumstances, this would be a much higher pick for somebody like Kid Yamamoto, but he's just looked terrible. Ricky Fukuda versus Stephen Cantwell. This would be a gold, a, di a diamond pick if Fukuda wasn't coming off of a, a knee injury from a car accident and also a year off. Um, Steve Cantwell, I mean, he's just not good at anything. Um, however, he has been a little more active. He's fought two times in 2011. Um, Ricky Fukuda, this is a platinum pick for Fukuda, better wrestler. Um, I think he'll just be able to totally out-wrestle Steve Cantwell and uh, probably submit him, if not get, this, uh, get the decision. So platinum pick. Asterix would normally be a diamond pick for Steve for Ricky Fukuda. Also, Fukuda was uh, on a tear. Um, he, his last fight, he got robbed against Nick Ring. And before that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven fight winning streak, which includes a win over, you know, Ninja Hua. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Fukuda should definitely win this fight. Mizugaki, uh, this is going to be a gold pick over Chris Carriasso. 
Mizugaki is a little wild. Uh, Kuriyasu does have decent striking. Anything can happen. Um, ground game, Mizugaki uh, will, will be better, uh, much better than um, Kuriyasu. But I don't know if, you know, I don't know if he's really going to go to the ground or anything like that. So, I mean, I do have Mizugaki being able to outstrike and outgrapple Chris Kuriyasu. Uh, but it is going to be um, probably a wild fight for as long as it lasts. If these other fights, Anthony Pettis and Joe Lozong and Frank Edgar and Ben Henderson, don't end up being, you know, good fights, this could definitely be a fight of the night.